would you look at that view? I didn't bring my tripod, so my wife here, Katie, the amazing, is gonna be my tripod. Let's get into it. Today, I'm sharing three things that I learned about my Canon R6 and its video capabilities that I wish I knew before I bought it. These are three things that I didn't see anybody talking about. I didn't watch everything, but maybe they'll be helpful to you. Maybe they won't. I don't know. My wife and I bought this camera primarily to shoot photos. We've been doing a lot of that lately, just taking pictures after pictures after pictures after pictures. I hadn't really looked into a small mirrorless camera for any video capabilities until I got a phone call from my friend AJ LaPre. Hey Tom, it's AJ. What do you think about coming out and filming some basketball with me? And after talking to AJ, I figured I gotta start learning how to shoot video. So I wasn't very familiar with monitoring log off of the back of one of these things. One of the first things I found when I got the camera and I was out there shooting log, when you're in the bright sun and you're looking at the raw color profile on the back of the display, it's extremely difficult to see. When you're in your camera settings, there's a whole tab there for Canon Log and you click on it and you turn on Canon Log and then underneath it, it has this little thing called View Assist. And when you click View Assist, it's similar to setting the Rec. 709 monitoring profile on a bigger camera. This changed everything for me. This is what it looks like if you're trying to view an image and log. And then when you put the view assist on, it looks something similar to this. You're recording in log, but you're having the image come through with all the contrast and saturation, and it makes it easier to gauge exposure. Anytime I was shooting in log, I felt like I couldn't quite tell what was really blowing out, what was really clipped. So switching to view assist was huge. Yes, I'm a young schoolboy. One of the second things I learned is that with this viewfinder, since this is a mirrorless camera and the image is coming straight from the lens to the sensor and then it's just duplicating from the back of the LCD screen to the viewfinder as well, you can lift this thing straight to your eye and you can see the same information. So it makes it a lot easier when it's bright outside to bring it to your eye and you can properly judge exposure and contrast and what your levels are doing. And it makes it a little bit easier to monitor if you're doing things that are very detail oriented. It almost makes it feel like an old video camera. I grew up shooting the mini DV Canon GL2. I was all about the viewfinder. I didn't very often use my little flip out LCD screen. So having this with the mirrorless camera is a real game changer. Continuing on that same thing, the same thing with thing number two, is that when you're using the viewfinder to judge your exposure, you can also do this neat thing in video mode when you have the focus set, I can bring the camera to my eye and I can half press the shutter and it'll give me an exposure reading. And I've learned to really trust this. There's times when I'm looking through the viewfinder or the LCD and it's bright, I wanna really, really close down to try to see more detail or information on my screens. Having this half hold on the shutter button will allow for it to give you a more accurate range of where your exposure's at. It's kind of like using a light meter. If you've ever seen the Sekonic spot meter, you can kind of click it and use it and it'll give you what the exposure's reading at that dot. This'll do the same thing. You could point out whatever you're looking at, hold the shutter halfway, and it'll give you an accurate exposure reading of how blown out or if you're right on or whatever. So it's a great tip. All right, so thing number three happens at the house. So we're gonna head back down the hill and I'm gonna show you something from the office. Let's go, come on, come with me. We're going home. If you ate all the cotton candy in the world, what do you think your teeth would feel like? Thing number three, when you shoot with this camera, transcode your footage. The first time I went out and shot with my Canon R6, I was filming with my friend AJ. We were doing a little bit of basketball. He likes to shoot everything at 59.94, so I was shooting my camera, the Canon R6, at 1080p, 59.94, and I also shot his camera, the Canon 90D, at 59.94. Both cameras were shooting different codecs. I think one's H.264, the other might have been HVEC. I got back and I was like optimistically thinking I could throw just the straight media from the camera into my Premiere timeline and boy, did it bog my system down. So what I found to be the best settings 
is when I shoot my Canon EOS R6, even in 4K, I dump my raw footage onto the desktop, then I launch compressor. In compressor, I go to the ProRes settings, and I notice if you have the space, for some reason, when you transcode it to ProRes 422HQ, and bring it into Premiere and then set your sequence and timeline settings to the same aspect ratio, the 3840 by 2160. It will run smooth and it'll cut like butter. Those are my three tips. I hope they were somewhat useful. Tip number one, when shooting in Canon Log, switch to View Assist. Thing number two, take advantage of the viewfinder. I had no idea with the mirrorless camera that you could use the LCD screen and the viewfinder at the same time. Also, adding that little shutter tap so that the spot meter will give you an accurate exposure reading was huge. Thing number three, transcode the footage. Take it to Apple ProRes 422HQ. It makes your editing experience that much better. That's all I got. Goodbye now. <laughs>